you are able to see you have PhD in computer science, PhD in computer science, certified ethical hacker, Sun certified Java professional, and Microsoft certified system engineer. In his recognitions, technology, technical board advisory member with the IGNU, technical board advisory member with the Pune University for cyber security professional courses at UG and PG level. He is also working as an international trainer for Hacker Halted 2010 at Singapore with EC Councils. He has developed his own Linux operating system that named as a security operating system. Today, sir, will enlighten us on a very important and interesting topic that cyber security, cyber warfare, and the cyber loss. Sir, I heartily welcome you, sir, at Bharat Vidyapeeth Institute of Computer so Applications and Management. Now I request, sir, to please take over the session and enlighten us, sir, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's indeed pleasure to be a part of uh, uh, one of the another uh, uh, sequence of trainings being organized by uh, Bharti Vidya Pete, and uh, I really appreciate the effort. And thank you so much, sir, to giving me opportunity to interact with all your wonderful audience. Vishal, sir, uh, Huda, sir. So thank you so much. And uh, today the topic is really wonderful and I believe everybody would uh, like to uh, enjoy this topic because this is something nowadays a very, very hot topic again. Though cyber security was again started long back, the issues were really came across uh, according to the technology. But the cyber warfare is another way which is actually, you know, enlightening the entire environment, entire globe. And uh, again, the flames comes to India as well. So we have to think about what are the real time issues, what are the real time uh, challenges, and uh, it's spectism like that. Everybody is have a fear factor that really we have to get into this uh, the cyber world. We have to really work on that grounds or not. So what are the what are the issues? What are the challenges? We all have to talk about. We have to all discuss the concern. Right. So in this particular topic, I'm going to discuss about uh, some case studies and then we are correlating with the cyber laws. So what is cyber law? What are the opportunities in cyber laws and cyber security domain? Uh, I just want to uh, sir, know uh, 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 about audience. If you just give me the brief idea about the audience so that I can give them some uh, case studies accordingly. And because I'm also indulged with many law enforcement agencies, and uh, luckily, I, I was able to solve their cases and, and as a part of a consultant and as well as as a part of a trainer. So, so I would like to share those case studies which might be relevant to the audience. So just uh, can you brief about uh, the audience also? So that would be really helpful for me. So there are the multidisciplinary faculty members. So okay. I request to all faculty members, please write in the chat window about your area. Okay, great. So you can open the cha uh, chat option also. Sure, sure, sir. Doctor, yes, sir. Doctor on Anub. the top menu, there is a chat option. Dr. Anub. Sir, yes, sir. Part, all the participants are teachers from different university departments, okay. colleges. This okay. includes uh, pure heart and okay. technology based teachers like uh, engineering sciences. This also includes teachers from education. I mean, humanities, social sciences, other disciplines of technical sciences like local management. And we, this is the fun month program known as a faculty induction program. Okay. So all of okay. our teachers, all of them know what kind of problem uh, to some extent or might have uh, read in the newspaper to what extent the cyber warfare is happening. Little information they might be having about cyber laws, but not detail. They should know and they should get sensitized that posting anything on WhatsApp, posting anything on SMS, or writing any such mail which is objectionable or which be an offense as per Cyber uh, IT Act 2000 and then uh, revisions in the IT Act. So these are some such sensitization which these uh, uh, young faculty member must know. And okay. I think the case okay. studies which you have are, uh, it will be very useful for all these faculty members. So okay. You can go okay. Sharing all of them have uh, many of them have shared uh, their uh, background in the uh, chat window. Please go ahead. Great, sir. Great. Thank you so much uh, for the entire details. And uh, certainly, I'll take care all the details. And as uh, you you mentioned, so I, I personally take care for all the real time cases 
uh, which are related to all cyber warfare and cyber laws and all. So thank you so much, sir. Shall I shall I proceed and shall I start and I'll continue? Yeah, please, please. Right, sir. Please right. Start. Thank you. So <clears throat> it's being an uh, honor, sir, like uh, to be a part of such a wonderful audience also. Uh, all the faculty members who are already in terms of cyber world and again from the different domains and different uh, areas. But actually, I believe everyone is connected to all cyber cyber world. We all are on gadgets. We all are on many different types of technologies where we are enhancing and things are going. We have a trust factor in other way that that we have to go for the technology. We have to be dependent nowadays. We are more on technology. but. The veracity is actually everybody have a fear factor also that the fear factor that is like whether am i able to get hacked or not if i use this particular part really i'm secure or not and i i believe all the faculties must be going to face lots of portions lots of issues in the same pattern and the same techniques so what is this all about how 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 the things are going in the cyber world what is cyber warfare? What is cyber laws? And <clears throat> is it really, really a risk? Really carrying a lots of vulnerabilities in our technology? I'll talk about some do's and don'ts as well. I'll talk about some real time questions. We will take some question answers as well, because in case if you have your own uh, queries, this is very, very, very interesting topic, no doubt in it. And I believe you'll be going to enjoy all these things by today. So let us uh, start. And generally, I used to start my session with very silly questions. All right. So my uh, first silly question is like, how many of you have an email ID? Email ID on free mail servers. Let's say free mails are like I'll say Gmail, Google. I think it's a really silly question. Everybody have a, a email ID on Gmail. Frankly speaking, stop using it or take precautions. Take precautions if you are not aware what exactly is going with with uh, the such email IDs. Why these mail servers are free? What are the real time of issues? And whenever we are talking about cyber warfare, actually these component that that the level of information which actually circulated on email servers, that information is actually a real crisp. It actually in light of fire because you're not aware now what exactly is going with that data i think i'll share a one case study and i'll start with the case study and then you realize why i'm saying so one fine day even i got a mail on my gmail again which is there on the desktop and on uh, on that mail i got a uh con that the content was there that hi anup how you doing today i'm in dubai i'll be back next week plan to meet either in delhi or mumbai so I got a mail from my friend. Uh, mail was there on the desktop. It was opened. And luckily I got a call and I was engaged for another five to 10 minutes on that call. The moment I came back, what I saw, and might be you also have seen the similar uh, kind of uh, cases, but generally we ignore. On that desktop, I found on the right side, the content was, I, I found a one pop-up in gmail itself and that pop-up says yatra.com provides you a dubai tickets on cheapest cost right so yatra.com provides you a, a ticket on a cheapest cost so can you imagine what was that all about how it works so in this case uh sir sir just give me a minute just give me a minute please
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I'll, I'm now I'm back. So I was talking about the case. Uh, uh, no, that's okay. Okay. So uh, I was discussing about uh, one of the case, uh, how it happens. So one fine day, I got a call from my friend. And uh, again, uh, I got a mail from my friend. And on the mail, uh, the content was, hi, Anup, how are you doing? Today, I'm in Dubai. I'll be back next week. Plan to meet either in Delhi or Mumbai. Thanks and regards. So that was a content on the mail. Now what happened? Luckily, uh, again on the browser, the mail was open. So I luckily got a call. So I engaged on a call for next five minutes. The moment I came back, what I saw on my Google, on my Gmail itself, I found on the right side there was a pop-up. And the pop-up was like, it shows me, yatra.com provides you a Dubai tickets on cheapest cost so have you ever thought really yatra.com provides you a ticket on cheapest cost oh, and i think you might also have seen similar kind of activities on google or some pop-ups are there but have you ever thought how it happens why google is giving me such kind of uh, ad advertisements if they already have a concept of google adwords so today i'm talking little technical because now cyber world itself is a hybrid world cyber world is more connected now with artificial intelligence data science and many different technologies so think practically how how this technical so i'm giving you a technical example now in this particular part what happened what i found that uh four keywords were there inside this mail and i think we generally ignore such advertisement but we actually have not to ignore it just cross check just think about why i got a mail or i got a pop up that yatra.com is giving me the cheapest cost of our dubai ticket i never applied for dubai i never went for or even i have never searched so you already know in case if you're searching on google and any keyword being passed on google they basically try to grab the information from your browsers in the form of cookies and all the all the similar activities being done google for google it's a business intelligence model so basically they used to fetch all the keywords so it means first what happened there is a data breach according to me there is a data breach in the mail the data breach in the mail in the sense it means google fetched the entire content of my email and they found some data which is unstructured data and under that unstructured data they pick a particular keyword now keywords are hi anoop so anoop is first keyword second one second word today i'm in dubai i'll be back next week so it means somebody is moving today i'm in dubai so dubai is another keyword right next after dubai what 
plan to meet either in Delhi or Mumbai. So Delhi and Mumbai is another keyword. So don't you think so? In this mail, the four major keywords which is required, the first is Anu. So who is the authorized to access that mail? As already Google have the details about your devices, even your internet connections. Right. Reason because they basically try to grab and I think you already have a concept of trusted devices. So Google already get the trusted devices. They already grabbed and they have the complete information with uh, of your activities. In fact, so they keep all the things in their records. And what happened on that basis? They try to now analyze the data. So I hope you all accepted the disclaimers and and we are accessing the mails and all uh, without any any uh, security part. So they they grab the entire country. Now they fetch the four keywords: Anu, Dubai, Mumbai, Delhi. Anu, as I open that mail on my trusted device, it means I can able to access the same mail immediately after that they try to grab the another algorithm i'm talking about the multiple algorithms which are running inside the system so the second part was they try to identify my geographical location so my geolocation was they already identified this geolocation is based on delhi so obviously i'm not going to take a flight from delhi to delhi right so they remove that delhi keyword out of that so now the two potential keywords which were left that is one is Dubai, second is Mumbai. And can you imagine for next two days, I got lots of pop ups for Yatra, make my trip, and many travel agents. Even I got SMS or even I got a one call also that are you looking for any international flights or something like very generic, but yes, I got some call. So I was just trying to correlate how it happens, how Google get to know that really am I, I'm going to fly or somebody is going to fly and I'm sure. The same content was shared to my, my friend as well. So think practically what is going on, how they got a lead generational model. What is the science behind that? And is it really, really trustworthy? Because the sensitivity of my data is more important. According to the Google, they said that your data is completely encrypted. The user, end user or both the end user can able to access that data only. No one can do man in the middle attack. Don't you think so? Google itself is doing a man in the middle attack. Google itself is trying to grab the information out of it. And they're using some data science algorithms on that and hack my data. Hack my data means it's a directly privacy breach. So even though in India, the concept was we have Act, Indian IT Act, IT Act Amendment 2008, which was introduced, initiated with the IT Act 2000. Then the amendments came in IT, uh, Act 2008. Furthermore, uh, uh, some, some standing orders and some notifications were there for a specific sections, which is updated and it is also available on Ministry of IT website. The concern is, what is, what is actually technology? If, if we'll talk about BTEX, if we talk about uh, uh, all the technocrats who really want to uh, you know, uh, get into the stream, which stream is nowadays better? I'm saying everything is better. All the streams are really good. I'm, I'm not denying at all. But why this is more hot topic? The reason is reason is that now what is going in intangible format? Nobody is aware of what exactly is going on a back end. Nobody is aware of recently. A few cases came across with Netflix. So how many of us really have Android TVs at home? If you really have Android TVs, and what it has been identified that the Android TVs were actually grabbing the details because they also have mic in the TVs. They, they try to, you know, grab all the audios also. And a part of that, even where you are accessing your accounts, your usernames, your passwords and all that stuff. Even though recently I did a one survey uh, with the, some, uh, 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 some faculties Basically, there were uh, some PhD faculties and all. I was sitting along with them. So one of the research algorithm we did a, as COVID-19 and these issues were already there. I hope you all are taking precautions, obviously. But we decided to work technically. So recently what we did, we did a, we took seven apps where Arogya Setu app is one of the app. And out of that, other apps were also there. So we pick all those seven apps 
from different countries, which is actually similar app like Aarogya Setu app, which gives the detail about their countries to their citizen about the information about the country and other stuff. So this was all about. So we took seven good apps and we try to identify what exactly is going on. Can you imagine the the most vulnerable app was one of app which we took that was Alipay. And we did a vulnerability assessment on that Alipay and we, what we found almost 15 vulnerabilities which exist in Alipay. Now 15 vulnerabilities were there on that Alipay. Uh, okay, okay. So a part of that <coughs> in in uh, Aroge Setu app, we again identify, we try uh, 31 vulnerability attacks. We try to identify on Aroge Setu app also. Out of that, we found three high vulnerabilities, four medium vulnerabilities and other lower vulnerabilities. Total 12 vulnerabilities we identified even in Aroge Setu app. And a part of that, even we use a NHSX that is from UK, from, uh, from uh, this uh, London, UK, the people were using and from different countries. Can you imagine the problem? The problem is most of the countries nowadays, what they are doing, they're very finicky about the data. And NHSX uh, app is more secured app as compared to the entire seven uh, uh, different seven apps, which we took reason. There was a one major reason behind that because the number of permissions being granted to that particular mobile app was very, very limited because of they already have the law called GDPR. So GDPR, which was already compliant and uh, it is there on the on uh, 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 in European Union, which has been already introduced. And in India, still there is a law which is missing, though already they are trying to cover, uh, you know, cover with IPC and other uh, uh, acts. But there's still one of the law which is missing that is personal data protection bill, which has been introduced in December 2019. It is already approved in Lok Sabha, but still it is not an act. Still it is pending to become an act. My concern is accordingly, Think practically the potential of jobs. Think practically the potential of requirements. Think practically that now whatever we are doing means I was just sitting at, at my home only and now I was just trying to analyze. Can you imagine I identified more than 18 digital gadgets which are running in my home only. In, in my personally, my, my kids were having their own laptops. We have mobile phones. We have uh, uh, this uh, Android TV. So almost 18 devices I've identified at my home only where 18 IP addresses were running. Do you know how many IPs are running at your end, at your, uh, at your office or at your personal stage? And can you imagine what exactly is there? Who is actually accessing your data? Might be a Wi-Fi get compromised. Do you really know that? How much uh, bandwidth consumption is there at your end? Do you know this? Can we able to identify? Can we able to diagnose? So cyber security is a one of the real potential area where we have to explore a lot. It is still a lot of gray areas are there in cyber security, which has to create again the compliance with the legal as well as the technical part. So I think all the freshers, even even I'm saying from the school side and even from the people who are coming like our students who are going to take admissions in BTEC or BTEC for uh, computer science and all. And again, I think AICT and UGC already have decided that they have a course curriculum which is mandatory to keep and which has to be compliant with cybersecurity part. So they are already started and they are already working on those grounds. So it is a one of the huge potential major part out of it. We have to consider that part right so what is what is this all all in cyber security domain how how we have to handle it what is the real warfare where is the war why i'm giving you this example the actual example is we are already hacked i interacted with a couple of hackers indonesian hackers and all they simply said they simply said Sir, Indians are acting like zombies for us. This is what the statement they said. Now, who are zombies? I hope most of you are already aware of, but I'll just brief you. The zombies who are doing the activities as directed, right? <clears throat> as directed, right? So whatever the directions has been given, 
what are those directions how it is working who is directing us and how our devices are working on those directions you can't imagine because if you are using any specific app like true caller is one of the app might be your most of you have a true caller in your mobile have you ever thought how this true caller works what is the criteria of this true caller Dr. Anup, your voice is not coming, your audio is not coming. Yeah, yeah, sir, yes, sir. Okay. Now it is done. Fine, fine. So <clears throat> the concern is whenever we are talking about certain apps, like you have a, a true color, and India already have just initiated and we got a list of some apps where we are trying, they, they simply said, let us ban those apps. It is not only that they, they are only focusing on Chinese apps, but have you ever thought what is exactly the real background? The background is one app, one Chinese app taking 41 permissions from our mobiles. Can you imagine? If you want, I can show you the list. In fact, so they are, they are asking for 41 different types of permissions from our apps. How is that possible? It means 41 apps means almost your phone is compromised. Almost everybody is hacked and all the things are going in this direction so the concern is we have to take a security point of view we have to create that part so, so just give me a minute just Dr. Anup, again, your audio is not coming. Dr. Anup. Sir, sir, just give me a minute. Just oh, give yeah. me a minute. No yeah, yeah. yeah 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 uh thank you thank you so much uh for giving me the uh i think some some uh technical issue was there so I, now i think everything is back and now it's going on yeah so i was just talking about this type of cases what are the warfare issues and all other issues quickly i'll just uh take you to the brief detail about this warfare i i i think before starting this uh, uh presentation let me show you what I exactly i'm talking all about uh just give me a minute i quickly show you something live so this is what uh, recently we discussed and we worked on a project uh give me a minute this is a real time warfare issues uh
हेलो हेलो हाँ जी सर हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी अच्छा 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 ठीक है सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर ओके सर ओके ठीक ठीक है है या सो जस्ट टेक अ लुक uh i'm going to show you something live which recently we we achieved and we we try to identify see this is my technical one of the technical report the practically we are trying to identify the real time vulnerabilities on these apps see these are the seven good apps which we we took a place one is arogya setu app abc tracker ali pay covid safe that is from singapore nhsx this is again for the for uh, uk uh and other uh, app one is track virus app and so on so we really worked on these particular apps just quickly take a look uh i'll show you a one report see <clears throat> a major problem in covid 19 everybody was there it's a pandemic issues and also worldwide situation was really worst and uh i think every government decided to share their information their local information or their country level information on these particular app so we took this particular app so in cyber war what is cyber warfare i'll show you the real time issues and some stats so this is a practical being done and we got a uh, results this is what like uh, we try to identify the results based on each app along with that we took a uh, some some results some content out of it so i'll show you even each and every content and i think then you will realize the real time problem which are coming up and what exactly i'm talking all about so so quickly i'll just take you to the see uh, while working on the uh, in the research part it is uh, actually being categorized so, so scope of work was in three different stages that was first is we did a asset management then we did a vulnerability assessment and the analysis between those apps and all so this is what all we did we took all uh, basic toolkits which are required for asset management so we took asset management part and under asset management say first we took arogya setu app internally we used to get the package name see these are the, this is the, again if uh, i think all the faculties are quite aware of linux so you can take it like because it's again android is also a linux operating system so even you can see this is a user id and all the group ids where the arogya setu app is taking the permission the name version code the target sdk now this is again uh, a little vulnerable i would say because uh, it's not vulnerable but it is more like a limitation uh, uh, limitation why because now why arogya setu is uh, <clears throat> more with target sdk that is 29 so target R, uh, uh, target sdk that is software development kit of android if the version is 29 that means we are talking about android 10 platform so what about the older versions so in case if you are trying to deploy the on older version might be they, they are taking more uh, details of your mobile phones and other activities so that is more uh, little vulnerable where this app was installed and quickly on which date which time so recently like on 29th of july we installed and we did all this exercise now see the flags basically they already took the permission has code allow clear user data so it means this app by default have the permission to go on the backend clear your data access the data retrieve the data and do whatever the the things they want from the client side and the types of permission which they are asking for so this is the grant permissions so you can take a look they are asking for the permission of internet access course location bluetooth receiving wake lock so if if it is locked your phone is locked uh, arogya setu have a permission to even they they can go for a wake lock it means they can even able to even open the lock as well and access the data asking the data to receive some information bind your install reference services access find location bluetooth 
and now this is this is little uh, 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 i would say this is spectacle i think this is a doubtful issue because why camera i think we all are aware of aarogya setu app we can understand they are asking for bluetooth we can understand that they are asking for internet services they are asking for other my fine location so what is the functionality if you just correlate the functionality of any particular mobile app along with the permission which are they are asking for i think you will be more clear to that that what what exactly is going on can you imagine at the time you are using arogya setu app they also use your camera on the back end and it means they can take a pic any time any moment if they want right so this is even in india this is what exactly is going on and if i really compare with the nhs x app which is again from <coughs> uk so uk is again with european union already as i as i said they already have the now act called gdpr now gdpr is what basically all the citizen the information about all the citizen should be it is compulsory that the data has to be only and only used and saved in their country no one without the permission of their citizen can use that information out of the country so that's what billions of dollars were actually you know claimed from google facebook and many social media sites because they were already have the have the you know uh, the, their their entire applications where they are actually grabbing the information like as i shared with google mail gmail as well so they are fetching my information without my permission and then they are doing business intelligence and generating the business leads out of it out of out of that so the concern is why they are doing so and what is that particular part now uk side if i'll just compare with the uk so other countries how they are working and what is their potential part out of it so in that particular part in case of uk you'll under, you'll identify they are taking very less permissions again the same way same time almost we try to install even though one more important but they are also accessing the camera so quickly i'll just take you again i have a trace together so all the sites are there i'll just take you directly to the to the comparison chart the analytical chart of that so that you'll be able to understand what exactly we are talking all about where is the what and even if you go for like alipay this is what i would say why india is is trying to ban chinese apps why what are the reasons so if you just see this is alipay right alipay now you can even compare see how many permissions they are asking for this is again a similar app for for sharing the the covid information to their citizen right a part of other activities or other uh, services which might be now you can see the grant permission so the list of grant permission even you can see system alert change wifi multicast state read phone state so anyone who deployed a similar app and see is almost all they recorder task they they access your nfc they ask access your network state authentication of the account so they have the permission to authenticate the accounts and manage their accounts so it means on a back end now i think this point is more clear also to you that any time if you are going to install any mobile app that app is internally going to create a one user id on your machine and that user id is under some group id similar like linux unix so just correlate the things and i think you will be more comfortable and see the big list it's a big list almost two pages uh, it is it is like they are going to ask for all the details so i have an extra and all that stuff so quickly i'll take you to the to the logs like how the things happen what is the critical stage so this is what all we did see out of that in aroge setu app we found even 12 vulnerabilities in this particular app out of 31 app we generated this report on 29th of july so again the details what are failed what are pass and all, all such information and again with all the cve common vulnerabilities which has been exposed so if you compare with the another one now see how many vulnerabilities out of 31 there are eight vulnerabilities and the most important part their permissions the number of permissions are very very less so it means what why it happens have you ever thought because legally compliance is more important at the time if you are going for a software development legal compliance a part of legal compliance more things are required like you you need a some software which which has to be you know 
cre created in such a way for the development part that at least the the personal information should not be disclosed should not be accessed by someone so we have to take care for these things these important things right and that is the basic raw input in cyber wars because now think on the disaster side in case if there is a war for the sake of god at least that should not be there but in case if it is the covid 19 is one of the attempt that is biological war already initiated almost all the countries are ready with their army and all their equipments with all the techno technologies that they are ready for the wars on 15th of august i hope you have seen the newspaper that some pakistani website got hacked and as pakistani website had their indian flag was there on 15th august and some quotations and some information was already circulated what is that no one knows that whether indian hackers really hacked that part or not or it might be any 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 hacker from any different country and they are just trying to you know uh, they just try to push this this warfare and they are they are promoting a warfare let 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 us be a, on a war side because we both are entity these both countries india pakistan china now all all are entity to each another all are doing certain activities on any fine day you will get anything in the news so it is not only that particular part what about the cyber war in case of cyber war your weapons what is the real weapon a grenade uh, i would say ak47 or even if if you know any another ammunition which is more for disaster any any missile i think your mobile is acting like a missile your computer your laptop or even your android phones are acting like missiles if you really want to stop any country and in case if you can hack their network systems and if we do not have any communication a model i think everybody was closed everybody was stopped at their end wherever they are seems to be like a you know uh, i hope you have seen one good movie nowadays like holiday and they were talking about uh, say these are a uh, uh, common man living in our society but they have some glitches with the government and they were actually you know doing some noid activity as per the directions so who provides them da those directions from where they will get the directions and can you imagine even our mobile phone and our devices are getting some directions from different aspects from different activities i'll show you something on the network side you can access we did some net start reports we generated some net start reports as well in this i identified some of the means for different stages for different mobiles this is a local ip and some port ips and all few of the ips few are uh, this is a google ip and all that uh, i think one or two this uh, specially ip v6 we found few of the ip addresses which are connected to russia now think practically why my machine my mobile is sending a data to russia what are the reasons is it any particular app which is sharing my data to russia and very soon that's why the most important part is so personal data protection bill is actually required already privacy the part of privacy is already in it act amendment 2008 section 66 where uh three years imprisonment 2 lakh rupees or both the provision is there the punishment level is there so already section 66 i believe section 66 uh, e you can see where the section 66 e which is actually related to privacy breach but privacy what level of privacy and really it is breached or not how you can generate the facts so where are the facts so i'm showing you certain facts and you can realize the real warfare issues so i have uh, some data some information let me quickly come to the analytical part and i think you'll realize what exactly i'm talking all about just give me a minute uh yes uh, okay not this one see some observations are there just compare aroge setu app and other apps what are their group permissions and who is actually accessing more like see alipay and trackwires these are the apps which are actually accessing more permissions asking for more 
uh, permissions uh, out of any other app. And if if we now you will try to identify certain patterns in the security part. So on the pattern, once we start working on the patterns and doing all such activities, we found see 41 permissions being asked by Alipay, where the least permission is one is COVID safe, and even 12 permissions are from NHS X. See, this is one of that. So what a countrywide, as per their law, the development has to be in that. And in India, we do not have such laws, such compliances. Sir, you are not audible. Anup, sir. No, sir, your voice is not coming. So you can do one thing, you can uh, leave the meeting and join again. Maybe problem will solve. I request to all participants, please wait. There is some network issue, I think, at the end of the uh, sir.
so dear participants by the time dr anup fix up the problem he fixes the problem and then comes back why this particular uh, session was organized when there was an exigency last moment uh, exigency with uh, dr mani who was supposed to give talk on role of academia in industry 4.0 uh, from ibm that that talk was basically that how education 4.0 is uh, going to be a mandatory kind of requirement for all of us for entire academic system and for the all teachers and when i am talking of education 4.0 i think the inauguration of this program had already discussed uh, not only education 4.0 i had sensitized and then uh, dr uh, ak singh the vice chancellor of the university the chief guest of the program had sensitized so when he said no then i thought there is one important aspect which is missing from this entire program is cyber security cyber warfare and cyber loss it is said in general now huge debate is also going on that as a citizen we must know what are our rights and what are our duties so where from we will come to know what our what are our rights and what are our duties when we will understand the constitution properly exactly in the same way when we are using information and communication technology in the big way and when i am talking of using information and communication technology in a, in a big way is not only that we are surfing website we are uh, uh, we are accessing application or we are accessing some uh, uh, kind of software using our desktop and laptop but the most is, uh, important vulnerability which is affecting negatively in our uh, day to day routine process is through our mobile and this uh, uh, process of uh, affecting our day to day routine and increasing degree of vulnerability will keep on increasing because with every coming day the penetration of smart devices are going to increase in our day to day system when i am talking of this that penetration of smart devices are going to increase our day to day system in every coming day i am talking of industry 4.0 and in that moment of time we need to understand that uh, what are necessary application for me so that we need to keep a balance that even if an application is freely available maybe on google pay maybe on app store maybe on any other uh, repository and if it's for me or if it's not necessary media is different aspect is not necessary for me you should not get fascinated about the data never done स्कॉलरशिपीड any kind of loan for any kind of scholarship and i receive a message in my mailbox that uh, you have one so and so offer you have one so and so award you have one offer from amazon you have one offer from microsoft then the way we understand that we haven't applied and it is uh, not uh, on it is not right on my part to open this mail it could be a phishing mail it could be a mail which will be which will be bringing me in huge trouble so exactly in the same way if the app is not required to me if that particular facility is not required to me let's not download free application from any and every problem any and every website or any or every repository and at this moment of time the kind of the temptation we get generated oh it is coming free let's let's download it that is where is a catch and that is where we get trapped into a kind of cyber warfare that where we get trapped into kind of cyber environment and then we keep moving from pillars to post talking to cyber people talking to cyber auditors talking to uh, cyber police to help us to come to our rescue but no one will come to our rescue dr anup is back are you audible dr anup yes sir yes sir oh yes so i will uh, i will uh, then stop here on this note that we have to change our mindset what is required then only we will be using and using with too much of precaution and that's how a great poet has said that jo chahte ho chiragon ko hum safar rakhna zara hawa ke iradon pe bhi nazar rakhna ab ujad gaye ho to ye shikayatein kaisi kaha tha kisne ki toofan ki zad pe rehna agar vulnerabilities ko hum right away nahi identify karenge aur hum vulnerabilities ki wajah se trap ho jayenge 
तो फिर हमारी प्रॉब्लम्स आएंगी एंड वी कीप ऑन मूविंग फ्रॉम पिलर्स टू पोस्ट एंड कीप ऑन टॉकिंग टू पीपल बाबा प्लीज हेल्प मी प्लीज हेल्प मी प्लीज हेल्प मी एंड नो वन विल कम टू योर हेल्प एट दैट मोमेंट ऑफ क्राइसिस सो लेट्स नॉट गेट ट्रैप इन दैट एनवायरनमेंट व्हाइल यूजिंग एनी आईटी एप्लीकेशन यूज विद ऑल योर सेंसेस इंश्योरिंग दैट यू हैव प्लग ऑल योर ऑल द पॉसिबल वल्नरेबिलिटीज एंड दैट्स हाउ द ग्रेट पोइट अकबर सेड कि इस ये जो चार पंक्तियां मैंने आपको सुनाई उसका जवाब ग्रेट पोइट अकबर ने दिया है कि मैं अपनी सारी वर्नबिलिटी सारे सॉकेट्स इस तरीके से क्लोज रखे हैं कि कुछ भी हो जाए मेरी कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होने वाली और उसके लिए ग्रेट पॉइंट अकबाल कहता है कि मैं आंधियों की जमानत लिखा के आया हूं मतलब कितने भी हैकर हो इन सब का कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ता मुझे मैं आंधियों की जमानत लिखा के आया हूं मेरा चिराग हवाओं के पास रख देना मैं ये मैसेज था ये पर्पज था आज का ये सेशन जो डॉक्टर अनूप के साथ रखा गया है कि आप सबको पता होना चाहिए क्या मेरे गूज हैं क्या मेरे डोंट्स हैं एडवांटेज डॉक्टर अनूप की ये है कि डॉक्टर अनूप सारे दो इन्फोर्समेंट एजेंसी के साथ काम करते हैं वो सारा नाम पब्लिक डोमेन में नहीं बता सकते उनकी अपनी कंस्टेंट्स हैं वो सारे केस लेटर एंड स्प्रिट में वो शेयर भी नहीं कर सकते बट उस केस के बैकग्राउंड में जो ग्लिम्स वो शेयर करेंगे दिस विल गिव यू एनफ इन्फॉर्मेशन कि हमें साइबर वर्ल्ड में अपने को साइबर नेटिजन अपने को साइबर सिटीजन बना के कैसे सेफ रखना है और ये जो चार पंक्तियां और दो पंक्तियां मैंने सुनाई हैं तो लास्ट की दो पंक्तियों के हिसाब से हमें अपने को प्रोजेक्ट करना है हमारा चराग हर हालत में जलना चाहिए इसकी सारी जिम्मेदारी हमारे ऊपर आती है ना कि इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के ऊपर आती है डॉक्टर अनूप प्लीज क्या सर थैंक यू सो मच a wonderful uh, sir uh, your your thought process and the way the word you express it is really really uh, marvelous i would say and it is actually a remarkable for all all the people who are either a technocrat or even from the any particular domain but i think your words are really really great sir i i appreciate ko miss kar rahe the to maine socha main aaj ke session ka purpose brief kar do apne partner so so nice of you sir thank you so much keep on keep on i think technically it will be 15 20 minute mil jaye aur main bol do please go ahead thank you sir 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 thank you okay so i was just talking about and i was just sharing a slide uh this uh, my uh, recently a research part so one of our uh, phd scholars who are working on these particular parts so i just i'm sharing few of the uh artifacts in security part only like how we did and how we actually identified the things now i hope you can see my screen i shared my screen right now right and i hope i am also audible now you are audible and your screen is also there great thank you sir thank you so much so quickly i'll just share see what exactly is going on so uh, we we decided to work on the again the especially for the warfare part and we decided because everybody have the problems and in, even in the uh, previous uh, sessions we got some feedback also from the faculties that sir we got to know there is a problem and there are many other issues but how to resolve it so let us initiate so on that initiative part i thought because uh, you are also from uh, again the uh, research domain let us discuss about the real time warfare issues and can we able to Uh, create some some mitigation policies can we able to create some risk analysis checklists so that at least we can able to identify what are the real time problems which are going on and even before going to use any particular app can we do all these things so i would like to show you some practicals also on these grounds and i think you can able to understand what is exactly is this all about so quickly i'll uh, again start with this part so we we did this vapt only on these grounds like uh, what type of data and uh, what type of information is there on android and uh, on the android see this is what the one of the technical report i quickly take you to uh so these are the seven countries where we try to identify the warfare issues because now everybody they, they are not directly coming to you that say we are on the war and let's let's have a fight together but what is the procedure and what is the initiative why why that specific initiative been taken by india that let us block chinese app why like tiktok why why many other apps were listed over there even wechat and many other so what are the reason because chinese apps are such apps 
where they are asking for lots and lots of permission it means in case if you deploy one single app now i'll show you one good another stuff at the time we were trying to explore some apps like this is one of the covid save app now can you imagine this is not only one apk the moment you are going to install a covid safe app then on the back end they actually also de uh, deploy two more apps so it means now there is a one one very generic question let's say we installed some app and we found something is happening or some some uh, misbehave is there in my digital device or any digital gadget so can we able to remove it say let's say if i uninstall this app then do you really believe that your system is safe or not so frankly speaking what happened in case if you deploy this covid safe app then automatically two more apps also get deployed in your mobile but the moment you go for a uninstall then only covid save will uninstall what about these two apps is it completely uninstalled or rest few of the apps which are there in your digital gadgets and these apps are actually on a back end they are basically a penetration based apps they can able to grab lots of permissions lots of issues on each app so we need not only to work with the one app actually we have to work for all three apps to just to generate the results for this covid save app so this is the way how practically we did and i'm showing you the real time practicals also to all the researchers and all the scholars so i think you you'll be more aware of what exactly on the back end and the things were going on uh, i just uh, go for uh, this uh, analysis all right so where is this analysis i took uh, i think page 40 is there somewhere okay so if you really uh, cross check see uh, relevant to the permissions the group permissions which they are asking for so what about the alipay why chinese apps is actually banned i think now you are more clear to you this particular part and some observations which are there for the research purpose and other purpose as well in the other way not only with the permissions from the from the group policy but other permission which is on the distributed level shared level or permanent level that is also being listed so you can identify 41 permission were taken by alipay and the most the least permission was with covid safe so first app is covid safe but only the problem is really did we really worked on all three apps or one app so out of all three apps we need to see the common uh, permissions and the unique permission out of that actually that has to be generated so these are the real time loopholes and limitations also in the research part so we have to be very careful because target is uh, one of the real part what is your target before going for any vulnerability test in the security part or in in, in warfare part so we need to understand all these models accordingly what are the versions and api i think uh, mostly all the apps were uh, you know promoting apk 29 as i've shown you sdk 29 and that is basically with the android 10 version so which is actually launched on september 3rd 2019 and so on 11 is on beta so it is still testing so think th this is the list you can see now so track together was started from lollipop 22 sdk version and if we'll compare with other apps so only indian app is there that is aroge setu app which is actually promoting only android 10. so i hope in india you must have noticed that you got a in mobile phone you got a security update security update on an urgent basis so that might and that is not you cannot you know skip you cannot remove you have to update your mobile phones somehow with the security updates and then automatically it pop ups and it converts your even if you have android 9 so android 9 was converted to android 10 so that was pi pi was converted to android 10 that is a version what are the reasons because our government is looking for a similar platform where we can talk about security issues we can able to block we can even grant a permission on choice basis to each app that is also in your mobile phone so we can find out the security issues and we can identify that part so again in that terms I think you can see the number of vulnerabilities which has been diagnosed and other part. So my concern is why I'm showing you the real time research part and this vulnerability assessment part because now think about uh, I was talking about true color. I was talking about Ola cab. I'm talking about like uh, uh, your Uber cab, Swiggy, Paytm, phone pay almost all such apps which were actually deployed in your mobile 
and so it means you have a one common platform where if you according to you if you deployed say 20 app or 50 app but according to us actually you deployed almost 200 apps if you are saying 20 to 50 app if, if this is what like which you may uh, manually installed as a third party app but there are certain internal app and there are th certain uh, uh library apps or, or a backend apps to execute one single app it means on a on a on your particular platform if you really go for auditing and you will find you will see the real gap that the level of vulnerability is quite high and the the libraries which are they are using on a back end is completely different model the permissions which they are granting is out of the blue moon and no one is blocking such things that's what like india is more vulnerable india is really vulnerable because we are not aware we are simply go and if anyone is using anybody anybody is recommending you will simply go and install the apps so in do's and don'ts i first major point never install third party apps if you are not sure about those apps and their requirements their permissions right because if you are using those apps then somehow you are vulnerable you are not aware like what what they are actually grabbing from your phone see even i got a one good query i remember somebody talked and said say say if someone hack my phone what they will get out of my phone i'm a layman i'm a very end user and nothing is there in my phone simple information which might be circulated and already available online so what happened in case even they they'll hack my phone so I, my answer is like sir according to you the priority of your data or your digital device might be low or you feel it is a normal or it's a it's a just general so you might be ignoring that part but actually you are carrying the indian identity you're carrying a one mobile number you're carrying one email id which is running in your mobile phone and running with the indian internet service provider so you already have one digital identity with you and that digital identity is actually required for many cyber wars i'm talking about dos attacks i'm talking about ddos attacks i'm talking about impersonation cases so many cases comes across with the case of impersonation case of phishing so many attacks and at the time once we are involved with the investigation what we always find means now we we simply assumed that the movement will go for investigation the ip must be spoofed somebody is using some third party vpns or cloud vpns and somehow we're going to get the ip address from such countries where even it is not a friendly country to our uh, uh, to to india and we are not going to get the information out of that at any way or any mean so how to handle such cases how to handle already government of india is working ministry of it has already been initiated on this particular project to identify if somebody is using a proxies or vpn can be able to trap it so already somehow some success is also there if if you are if the most of the faculties might be heard about like this a web development a dynamic web application development and so on so on that ground using a concept of javascript the code has already been initiated and those codes what we are doing if you are accessing any website that code actually deployed to the end user device so on that device then that code execute from that device from their point of view so it is basically reverse tcp connection in case in terms of networking or reverse data collection information which is in the form of cookies stored in the form in, in that machine and being retrieved by the servers so that we can able to trace whether the ip is a legitimate ip or it's a fake ip so these are the ways how nowadays investigation model is going on how so information security is more important information is a, a data means it's an asset now everything is data everything is information and information which is on cloud information which we all are doing basically it is used for the behavior analysis it is used for the purpose to grab your information means you can't imagine shall you just anyone can share your gmail id or shall i share my gmail id let's say i'll i'll show you on my screen let's say i open a one gmail id uh quickly i open my gmail see i'll show you can you imagine if you are running google this is what my gmail id i access that part so <clears throat> I'm running a Gmail ID. Can you imagine Google always keep 
are tracking and monitoring on us and they always have a records on that so i quickly show you the live results of google i use only one keyword i hope you might, might be heard about my activity so if you just use a my activity of google just go and check i'll show you the real time scenario what happened what i did what type of content i i i access on which date which time which type of information so on which date say on july 2nd 22nd on this date this time i access these videos these youtube videos and so on might, might be you have a your other activity so even on the previous date whatever i have been searched or whatever i have been you know working on upon google is keeping all the records all the tracking and monitoring is the on us we are under surveillance our they are basically working on behavior analysis right so what is this behavior analysis even may and all so you can see see the results your previous results when what happened where on that day on 11th of may i was watching this video or or i think i accessed this video that is for igno and my acic audio videos uh, presentations are available online on youtube and so on so so can you imagine means in case of april i think that was my my daughter used to listen lots of songs on my mobile so see the results when what she accessed so i can even i gave my phone to my daughter okay you want to listen to music okay take a phone you want to see the youtube okay that's fine so she she accessed a youtube on that particular day and she was listening this punjabi songs and all so i got each and every track every record so might be it is for the monitoring and tracking purpose might be it is used for but think about why google is keeping all this record so we have the option we can even control and we can manage that's a different part we can even delete other activities and all but my concern is by default google is accessing your your records whatever you are doing your geographical location and all the google related applications they maintain the logs on the back end using my activities and anyone can trap frankly speaking we saw lots and lots of cases of missing person using google ids and i recommend others also please share your gmail username and password with your family members to whom you trust in case of any emergency if we require to trace and if you have any problem how can we able to identify you from where from where you are accessing if we'll take a legal channel i think missing report after 24 hours only they'll they'll register missing report and all <clears throat> but today if i want to identify any person at this instance how can i do this i i only ask do they have mobile phone yes they must be having internet in that yes if yes do you have their email id and password so then uh, then the uh, it, there is a segregation right we need to identify that whether the users are there who are really using this content or not so i appreciate we all should keep our gmail username password which is actually deployed in your phone should be shared for the emergency purpose to your family members or your friends or wherever you feel comfortable because in case of emergency how we track how we are able to identify i'm not going to hack your mobile your, your gmail id or something like that but in case if i'll get your gmail username and passwords and able to access from my browser i'll go to the activity part and we can even track exactly what was your last location exactly what you did where you travel from which place to which place you actually traveled so everything was logged even by google so i think there is a wonderful uh, news uh, one guy what he did he took almost 40 50 mobile phones started a mobile app like google maps right he started all that apps and all went on a road somewhere near to the red light he started all the phones and every every phone is active and he was just uh, you know standing over there as an idol can you imagine google play uh, google maps shows everyone that there is a congestion there is a huge uh, traffic jam and something like that because 50 people are there who are carrying the mobile phone and standing on that particular red light and it shows it's a jam but actually there was no jam so can you imagine even indians are making fool to google all right so so these are the state these are the ways how how you can even uh, you know play with the technology but is it legally right 
is it really compliant to the legal part so the most important and major challenges is legal part i'll i'll i think so this is what a, one of the real time practical which we did so i just want to share something for you which is possible uh, okay quickly i'll share with the i'll come to the presentation part i actually stopped so what is cyber security and all that stuff uh, uh okay okay some major points uh so frankly speaking if we all have i hope you all have a social uh, media you are you're connected on social networks you have android phones and all tablets digital gadgets now iot devices so android tvs and all operating system how many of us really use a windows see i'm not saying anything to windows or to microsoft but my concern is the the tendency in india that we want windows but we do not want to purchase except organizational part or except if you purchase a laptop and might be you'll get a windows along with that laptop so you'll say that you are carrying a genuine windows no in india i think more than 80% people who purchased genuinely basically they never purchased genuinely they have a oem pack of microsoft windows 80% right they are having a microsoft windows which is oem pack oem means they purchase the hardware and windows automatically comes with the with the authenticity with the genuine part and so on but really we went to the market we purchase a dvd or in some form and we actually deploy it to our computers and laptops or something like that no almost no and what about then further uh, many applications like you have a uh, um, uh, ms office really uh, purchased ms office or you use uh, some torrents and download applications from the torrents and all i just want to update you uh, government of india is now it is monitoring and tracking all the activities being downloaded from the torrent sites so officially it is banned officially in india you cannot access the torrent but you know in india again because uh, it is banned so all all the technocrats tech savvy people they feel okay come on now i have to download it by hooker by crook hardly matters whether government of india is blocking me or not so then they start looking for the alternates and how we can access those sites and all so to access those sites, they start working on on torrents. They visit some third-party applications, or or uh, like nowadays you have a like Tor as a browser, where by default they have some VPN concepts and they have a routing concepts, packet switching, network switching concepts, backend, and even network switching. More with network switching, I'm talking about. So there is no identity left behind. That which was the source and which destination you are accessing so even destination never able to track back to you that you are accessing some some of their information out of that or not right so in this case in this such scenario what happened many software many third party tools tricks are available but do you know the moment you install those apps what happened with your mobile or what happened with your laptops and computers and all you yourself invites all the top level vulnerabilities even though hardly matters you have security in your operating system you have antivirus or something like that or firewall hardly matters you yourself give an opportunity to to create an authentic a backdoor and anyone can simply come across those backdoors using some anonymous ports and they can access your entire operating system which is really really dangerous which is really really you know a, a big problem behind the entire network infrastructures or so how about <clears throat> linux so i i recommend if you really want to use a pirated windows and all stop using it stop using it i recommend please start using linux ubuntu is one of the free operating system free means uh, i'm not saying that you want to go for a development but actually free to use free to download free to make a multiple copies free to install on your network infrastructure right and in case even if you feel that you want to manipulate and you have a skills up to that even you can make manipulations and make a customized os as per the need which is legally you have the options to work on this what is legal part in this that is gpl journal public license so any application which is under gnu gpl gnu is one organization which was earlier named as uh, genome is not unix but now further it is it becomes an organization and they are giving uh, authenticity to those apps where 
the authors of those apps giving the source code along with that right so firefox mozilla firefox is open source app right but chrome is not open source though it is free so free and open source is different internet explorer is free with your operating system but it is a hundred percent proprietary product you are not supposed to make any changes so we have to check we have to cross check the ipr intellectual property rights we have to read the disclaimers before using any apps or any third party applications or so on because you are not aware how the things are going on and how it is uh, you know it, it is basically for the disaster for our country so we need to take a lot of precautions and all those grounds what about free mail servers google and i think what about debit credit cards net banking mobile banking so if you really cross check we all are on the on the high risk indians are actually on high risk right but because everything is going on silently intangible form nobody is bother about it so things are going in that direction i believe instead of installing anything you might go for installation but why not we'll do some categorization i believe which is a non technical solution but it is a very very good solution i always recommend if you have one mobile phone either you stop using the a smartphone or in case if you want to use a smartphone then it's better you carry now two smartphones and categorize your computing like your banking apps your your all net banking issues your confidential numbers your confidential emails keep it on one phone which is least connected on internet take another phone where you have all social media ola cab and blah blah where you actually need a internet a lot use it on the other phone so that in case if any application get compromised due to any reason right or due to any particular attack or might be you are a targeted or any particular app is a target so anything which might be happen any fine day can we think about the disaster plans right for the war for issues for the safety and precautionary issues for our country let us think about how we can secure in case if something is wrong so better is like i i'll give you like if you have a one um, bank account saving account where you got all your salaries and all your savings are there in one account then i recommend instead of one it's better you carry two saving accounts right one saving account where you got all the incoming right all, all the assets are there and one one saving account which is only for the transactional purpose which you can connect to any net banking app or ola app or uh, swiggy app or whatever you want and keep the least amount where in case if due to any reason the percentage it is all the matter of percentage let's say if 1% if it is hackable 99% it is not so you are safe but if 1% if it is hackable then what is a what is a how, how you can mitigate that risk to mitigate that risk i prefer you keep very less amount in that particular saving account which is connected to all your your banking apps or net banking and so on so you make all the transaction from that particular app and to transfer the app do a contra entry from your main saving account monthly i think by using check or any common or might be any net banking but at least once a month should not more than that right so you'll be more safe uh, risk factor is very very less so you mitigated the risk uh, risk issues and all and you can if freely you can access your network services or internet service and you can enjoy all these features technology is to enjoy as it's a fun oriented but obviously along with the fear factor so how to mitigate the fear factor i think that is what all i am talking about right what about dsc recently i have seen uh, everybody uh, almost all the directors and uh, they have a one digital signatures in the corporate world almost all the top notch they have their own digital signatures for uh, gst filing income tax return filing and so on right <laughs> and i found uh, one fine day i was with sitting with one of the ca and i found uh, like i was just he was very friendly to me so one one uh, uh, intern come to him and that intern said sir sir can you please give me the dsc of so and so person i have to go for return filing and and all that so he said come on you go and take there is a one bunch of bag and one plastic bag is there you just take it out find his dsa uh, dsc and uh, you just do the transactions and all i was shocked to see more than 200 plus pen drive seems to be like a pen drive but actually it's a dsc right more than 200 plus dscs were there in one bag one plastic bag 
I said, what you are doing, guy? The means, are you sitting to Nehru place and capturing all these pen drives from there or what you are doing? So he was laughing and said, no, 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 it is not a pen drive, it's a DSC. So I was shocked, like, the people gave you that your DSC, their, their own DSC. They said, yes, we asked for that only. It is only with us only, even, even. So it means you officially given your signatures, digital signatures to your, your CA or any, any accounting person. And they are not doing anything for you. Their interns are working under them and they are actually doing all such activity. According to the law, according to the cyber law, there is a keyword called non-repudiation. Non-repudiation means you cannot say no in case if any mishappening or any wrong information being submitted to any government body or any government portal or somewhere, then it needs to be whatever the consequences are there, that has to be. So all those, the, those consequences has to be faced by the owner of that DSE. Right. So I generally ask one question, like let's, let us suppose one company, a boss is having a DSE or their email ID and he intentionally unintentionally but a boss shared his dsc or email id passwords or any authentication to their employee let's say some some um, to their pa or any person who is working on his behalf now that person intentionally or unintentionally did any wrong transactions or make any illegal activity being performed by using that identity right who will be responsible that employee or the the person who owned that email id or that device or and so on who owned recently one case is also there uh, in uh, tis azari we were sitting uh, i was uh, just wondering and one uh, advocate was presenting that case the case was sir we have this email id with us and uh, this is what the mail, but uh, in the case of company, the two people, two, three people were using the same email ID and uh, uh, the password was shared with each another, though it was created by so-and-so person and, uh, and they, he used to access, but he shared the, those IDs and something wrong happened with that email ID and something was there. So, so concern was, now they were fighting on this particular word, who owned that email ID? Can anyone answer on the chat? Like if you have your Gmail ID, abc at gmail.com or whatever the email ID you have, do you have the ownership of that email ID? Yes or no? This is my concern. Do you have the ownership of that email ID? Can anyone answer this on a chat? No. Okay. Then who owns abc at gmail.com? Then who is the owner of that email ID? And how you claim that this so-and-so email ID was actually used by you, by, by yourself, right? And it is being, how you give the evidence that this is your email ID? If you are not owning that email ID, then why you are using Gmail ID? And I hope you all already uh, connected your email IDs with your banks for your uh, statements, bank statements, and even some government portals might be with your passport or any other applications or any other card or wherever you have applied for right and we are running those email ids even since decades so think practically if you already saying i think you all few of uh, one answer is yes but rest all are saying no then give me the answer who owned that email id who owned that email id so one of the case was very interesting case going on in this thesis Ari. And uh, luckily I was also there for uh, as a as a consultant, as an advisory to some advocate uh, team of advocates. I was along with them. Right. So now the question raised that this is your email ID. They said, yes, this is my email ID. What is the email ID? So abc at gmail.com. So are you the owner of this email ID? The person said, yes. Actually, the answer is no. We all are not at all the owner of Gmail ID. The owner of Gmail ID is Google only because they have their server, they have the data, they have already signed a disclaimer from you and then basically we all are the end users. 
and we signed the end user license agreement with Google. On that basis, Google gave us some services so that we can able to receive mails, we can able to send a mail and so on. But on which ground? The main ground was privacy breach. So the entire rights are with Google. You cannot claim to Google that, hey, you hacked my email ID. That is a privacy breach. How you get to know that that you want a ticket for Dubai or, or uh, somebody is moving and why they are giving me uh, some, some pop-ups similar to that, the activity, whatever being. Even officially on Google, uh, on TV advertisement, I have seen Google gave you the, the part. We gave you the result or alternates as per your requirement. So that is one of the advertisement I have seen on the TV. Officially, they are saying that you search for anything, we'll make a Google for you similar to that way. And they want to, uh, you know, produce like we have artificial intelligence model and something like that and so on. But sorry to say, the first initial thing is it's a di direct privacy breach. I highly recommend stop using Google. Means now how you will give the evidence. And again, in that case, the concern was the three people were using, right? Th those three people were using the same common email ID. And now the question is, who is the owner of that email ID? And whomsoever the owner, because then, then the case goes to the, the, their favor. That was the only concern. And everybody was fighting that, no, this email ID is used by me or used by me. So how you, you, you claim that email ID, today you share your password intentionally, unintentionally, or somebody hacked your password. How you'll, you'll produce an evidence that yes, that email ID is owned by me. Obviously it is not owned by you, it is owned by Google. So technically we signed a legal agreement with Google that is an end user license agreement. So we become an end user license. So we, are, we signed that agreement, but there is no face to face interaction. There was no KYC, something like that. So who signed that agreement and how you produce means, can you imagine in that particular case, how, how we introduce the evidence, their, their business card. So some person said, see, this is my business card. And on this business card, I'm using this email ID officially. You can take my business card. So even that business card used as an evidence, a physical evidence that so-and-so person is using that specific email ID. A part of that, that, people, that person used the same email ID for banking purpose. So we asked for a bank, a letter that from since so-and-so date, uh, uh, that person was using this email ID and all the entire uh, banking statement also goes. So that is another literal part. But on, on the spot, we have to give the evidence and that evidence was nothing. We, we have shown a one business card of that person where that Gmail ID was written. So it means that person is an end user of that email ID. That person is not the owner of that email ID. So legally there are lots of, you know, uh, 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 some some I would say pros and cons are there. We need to understand that model. Why I am saying stop using Gmail. And to be very honest, I think everybody is aware of already our honorable Prime Minister uh, Modi ji they already declared. Now we want everything Swaraj. We want everything in India. Make in India again. So they clearly said. Come with your mobile app, similar app which we have already banned, like in China or these other apps. Come with those those similar application in India. We'll pay you back by 10 lakh rupees or some rewards were also being introduced. So registered email ID on UIDAI maybe and the evidence or not. Yes, it is again evidence. But uh, see, again, the uh, uh, Dr. Gupta concern is you are not the owner of that email ID. First thing. You are only the end user of that email ID. Third thing, from uh, the period and all that part is also one of the part. In your UIDAI, as you have already declared and you have registered, that's okay. That is also valid. But do you really have the evidence of that? Because in UAID, if you have an Aadhaar card, is your that email ID is written on that Aadhaar card? I have a doubt. I think I'm not sure whether you have a, a written email ID on your Aadhaar card. It is not written directly. Though you can make changes and later and that is for your personal use. So no, it is not actually right. It's not written. So you cannot produce as an evidence. 
where it is written even your business card is again i, I said we can even use your business card or in bank we can take a official letter from the bank that we have so and so email id since so and so date so that might be again uh, could be a one of the part of the evidence but my concern is again you have to write technically that we are not the owner of so and so email id we are just the end user of that email id and on that basis we are working uh yes uh, uh mr mayank yes uh, certainly we can block uh, google activities for sure we can uh, delete those activities or even you can block so that google should not go for it and they'll not grab those content but again might be it is not on the front end which you cannot see but yes on the back end they do each and every activity and not only with google even with facebook even with twitter even with instagram even with whatsapp they all are doing the similar activities so today if you really want to see i think i can take my phone i can check a facebook and quickly i have a process where you can immediately see where is my friend located right now in case if they have opened that facility so even find my friend so th these are certain features which has been already introduced on the back end and nobody is aware of even in facebook more than 120 security options are there but are we really aware of no not at all even uh, one of the case very very recent case again uh, that new year december 2019 one of our very well known professor what he did on facebook he placed a timeline that hey i am at uh, now indira gandhi international airport flying from new delhi to singapore to enjoy my new year right so he was flying to singapore to enjoy his new year he posted on facebook and it was the things were there and again everybody is hey well, good wishes and and enjoy happy journey and something like that and all now the problem this is not a problem that you are sharing the information the problem comes later such information that specific information circulated to some group users even you are not aware how many users are there in your group and all are legitimate or not all are known to you or not actually we need a sanitization of the users even in facebook i think everybody need to do that activity as well right what happened with him as he was out of country for almost a week or so the thieves came to his home stay in his home for two to three good days enjoy their fridge refrigerator and all the amenities in that home and the stolen each and everything with very peace and calm way they fetch all the things capture all the things and simply run away because they knows that the couple and the entire family was in singapore enjoying their new year and their people were enjoying new year at the at their home and the moment they came back and they were shocked what happened with them now think practically how thieves get to know that they were actually uh, away because thief they have their other pattern this pattern says that it means thief was already aware that the the the, the entire family would never going to come back for at least seven days so they enjoyed three to four days at their home stayed enjoy the meals all all everything and with uh, with very decently they they theft each and everything from from their home and they simply move out so think practically what all these things are going on am i the owner of my mobile number sir a very good question uh, dr singh <clears throat> see again uh, we are the end user of mobile phones number as well you cannot say you are the owner because the owner is all service providers airtel M uh, M uh, this mtnl bsnl they are giving you the number from their series so the ownership is with them you are the end user of that number and they have a kyc on that basis so it means the first right and now now again the question is one more section intermediary act because now they are basically acting like an intermediary in it act also there is a concept related to intermediaries and some relaxation and some liabilities has already been imposed to all the intermediaries like all this uh, communication service providers so now the concern was like say some case happened and uh, because that number or that ip address belongs to some service provider so can we make a party uh, and uh, to to so and so 
uh, company like might be Airtel or uh, any Vodafone or whatever the number you have. So can we also make a party in that because the IP address belongs to them or mobile number belongs to them? It is actually for their series, for their circle and their. So all the evidences are related to their side. So can we make a party also to them? Actually, the concern is no, we cannot make them a party in the court cases. There is a reason because they are intermediaries. They have registered themselves as a service providers, internet service for ISPs or mobile service providers. So as they are already registered as a service providers, now the liability for them is to maintain all the records with all the artifacts relevant to that specific number. In case if they are unable to fulfill and unable to deliver to the concerned authorities, then certain liabilities are there. And uh, there is a provision again in IT Act 2008 that 5,000 rupees per day or in subsequent form in the second uh, conviction, then 10,000 rupees per day, the penalty is there from the day where they are not maintaining those records. So that kind of liability has already been imposed to all the service providers. But the concern is, what they have to provide so enforcement agencies always try to connect with these service providers and asking the detail about some number some ip address and it is their duty to deliver the report back to the enforcement agencies this is a way this is a channelized process and the legal process okay and now whatever the information being given by them so the mediocres these all are the man in the middle people right so they are service providers so in case of intermediaries, they have a uh, assumption means they have a, some relaxation from the IT Act 2008 that they are they cannot become a party because they are the intermediaries. Only the condition is they have to submit a report, submit a logs as directed by the investigating officers or any particular department. Right. So again, I think there are some questions. I think Dr. Gupta is clear. Many apps we we are using required Google account. That's right, uh, uh, Ma'am Gupta, Supriya Gupta, Ma'am. The our our government also wants us to use those app like Google Classes and all. Uh, see, I I feel that government never say that you use Google Classes. That might be a decision from our side or from your organization or your management side. Government is never saying that you use Google Classes. But in other way, we do not have a best alternate or compliant or similar. Uh, kind of a platform um, uh, somehow comparative to Google or and so on. I think if you remember Zoomus, the day this COVID-19 started, the problem started, the first and the best app which was available for video conferencing was Zoomus. But what happened? Ministry of IT, CERT, Computer Emergency Response Team, they also did a vulnerability test on the Zoomus app and they found some vulnerability and they suggested please do not use this app. Now, actually, the problem is, yes, I agree. There was no end to end encryption in that app. And once they got an alert and that kind of issues. So from 7th of April 2020, Zoom us app came with the solution that is end to end encryption. And they said, now it is secure. Please use it. Don't stop using it and so on. But the trust factors was actually compromised. And the next trust factors was again from Cisco, like Webex, as we are all are using Cisco is another brand another product service providers and something like that though already they were using end-to-end -end encryption you can't imagine if you already did a video conferencing on almost uh, even google or on microsoft teams or uh, like webex zoomers and many more portals are there means i'll show you i already have a server this is my my virtual box you can see video conferencing server i I use open source. I, I show you, I, I just quickly brief you. This is what exactly. Uh, we are the India's only company. We file a patent in 2011. And uh, the concern was like, we we prepare, we, we designed this operating system, which is Linux based platform. That is Sedulity operating system. So I use personally this operating system and my team and uh, even corporate and government departments already using this operating system. So in the same way, because we, we are talking about kernel level security and many other level of securities, and that is what we deployed in this particular part. So I'm not saying this, but my concern was, see, the concern is this video conferencing server is also built on open source products on Linux environment, 
we deployed entire server and this server is actually 100% similar to Zuma's or Webex and many other. So even today, why we are paying to Webex or any, any other departments and so on. You can't imagine even we can deploy these servers to our organizations. We can deploy the server. The entire data recordings would be there with your server. Only you need a good bandwidth. And whether you are running a school, colleges or classes and all the activities can be easily performed online using your own video conferencing server which is 100% compliant so i believe webex zoomers and we already did the auditing and all these things after that i'll say 80% features 90% features are almost same which is actually available on open source even the platform similar look and feel that the pop up window which comes so even the ui model is also user interface model is also similar to almost all these apps only the difference is the branding, the promotional part, the management part, security part, which is actually important. And as per the countrywide, now, now why TikTok is banned? TikTok is actually going to talk about Indian government or Indian uh, some some uh, you know entrepreneurs. Why? Because they want to stay in India. They were earning four hundred crores per day was the income. I mean that is what the revenue being generated from TikTok and all. That that is what like the the report was somewhere i read somewhere uh, on some some uh, news portal and and all of a sudden it is blocked so tick tick won't no i will not deploy a server in in china please give me the option i'll again deploy it in your data center in india or others even amazon cloud services almost people are now avoiding cloud services because of the security issues because of the again warrior issues the cyber war issues and all because my data my information being circulated to others and they might be misusing it so how to control how to mitigate that part and to mitigate such part what all we need to do can we keep that data back to our country for that what we want we want similar applications similar softwares to be deployed in our premises testing security vulnerability test i think that is also one of the model and in case if we really develop this thing then actually will prepare make in india actually my data is with me actually you are going to create a trust factor with you right and the entire control with all the entire control similar like google and in the same way similar like webex or similar like any other way so my concern is i am not anti to any particular company or their products because they are really giving a great support great thing right now i have just audited this uh, zoomus also and what we identified that Zoomus is using a backend server that is from AWS, that is Amazon Web Servers. And the concern is Amazon Web Servers are running a one data center in Mumbai. So we got the IP address which belongs to Mumbai AWS, even not US servers. So this is the way how it is coming up. Even now, if we are already on WebEx, let's quickly do a practical, small practical. Let me show you. Right now, we are connected to WebEx right we all are on webex even you can also cross check so this is a small brahmastra which actually we used to run in i'm on linux in windows also you can run netstat space hyphen n on linux or apple mac or android you can run netstat space hyphen a n so pipe more this is just to show you a screenshot something like that now you can see right now tcp established connections are there if i'll capture this part and now the common behavior if you will see 114 ip and all that stuff is there right let me take this 114 or something if i'll copy this ip i'll open a new terminal uh and uh, in linux i have a concept called who is let me try and try to search see this ip belongs to whom us california webex can you imagine what is this so right now webex as we are connected to webex right now i am connected to webex which is the ip or which particular ip to whom i am connected to so you can cross check and you will see 114 number ip again 114 number ip is there they are also on a backend they are connected so 443 port number is already there it means you are connected to https servers so that's what i want to make it more little practical for you
You are not audible, sir. Dr. Anup, you are not audible. Dr. Anup, you are not audible. Sir, sir, you can leave the meeting and join again, Anup, sir. I think I have just shown you a one small example where uh, uh, some some problem was I don't know technical issues. So I think we that is also one of the part pros and cons is there for uh, online conferences or online uh, session delivery or offline uh, or even classroom sessions are really I think better. But no doubt if you have a good uh, internet speed or so these technical issues, not that though I think you will get more advantages. So pros and cons are there. That's what I said. Uh, well, quickly I'll come back to and as I was discussing about like as we connected to WebEx, I tried to identify the IP address and the details of that IP. What I found that WebEx is basically that company which is operating from Singapore, but they have their data centers or all their servers in US. And right now we are connected on in, in US through Cisco. And obviously Cisco is a, one of the big company for networking and network service providers and all. But if you really compare with other service providers, you will find. So very soon you will see, very soon you will see, I think uh, by the end of this year or by next year, India will going to get a one act that is a personal data protection act, which is already being approved in Lok Sabha in December 2019. And uh, it is still pending to become a, a bill to become an act. So already bill has already been approved and uh, hope to uh, to get this act also in india and at least the government is also taking an initiative they already got the flames that the problem like how all these third party service providers simply penetrated 
in India in any end user system and they can access whatever they want. Uh, please uh, repeat, sir, how to find uh, the IP address of WebEx. Okay, okay, sure. So right now I just connected to WebEx and uh, in this WebEx, I'll share a screen. Uh, quickly, I'll share a screen again. I think that is what required. So I just uh, shared a screen and uh, on this uh, you can see I open a terminal and uh, I simply pass a one of the command called net start hyphen n space more. So you can see right now in this at this particular time you can see 114. So see the flood. Flood is more related to 114, 114 IP series. Right. Again 114 IP series. So what I did, I only pick up one of the IP series of 114. I open a new terminal. On that terminal, I just pass a who is basically that is a service uh, from ICANN which gives you the detail about IP or domain names. So what I found, I just passed that part and what I found, uh, the see the description that uh, this is a net network service provider, WebEx APEC. So it means it is a description for the WebEx communication part which is in the country of Singapore. So they are operating, their management is operating from Singapore part. But the IP address which we receive is from US. Uh, again, their WebEx uh, US uh, address, even their Cisco email IDs, or might be you'll get some contact numbers as well. Sometimes you will find that data as well, right? Uh, for the technical operations, network operations, uh, organization details, and so on. So all, all their different uh, details are available. And finally, the people are running the entire details from, see the phone number is also US plus one and the IP which is belong to this. So in case if we have any problem, any issue or any abuse which you want to raise uh, with WebEx, so where we have to approach, I think the details are there in front of you. So we got uh, their email ID, their uh, address, their phone numbers and their country details and so on. So in this way, this is the procedure I identified like, see my machine, my local IP with the so and so particular port numbers are connected with public IP and this is a public IP of WebEx and, and even many more uh, details are there with different IP addresses. So I just want to understand how WebEx is working on a backend. Where is their IP? Where, from which country we are accessing? And very soon you will see the day this personal data protection bill get approved that becomes an act then actually it is very difficult for us or for everyone to transfer their data from India to some other country and in case if there is a recording or something so they will take a bona fide or they will take a uh, in their disclaimers obviously they will take a legal permission to save your data in their country and Actually, it is required that you have to, we have to save the entire data or all such recordings. Suppose the recording is there for this session or any other way. So we can we should keep all these records in India in Indian data centers. So how you'll manage it? How you'll cross check it? So very soon you will see that similar kind of platforms are again required in India and everybody will gonna configure their own servers for video conferencing and for many other details. So this is a wave. This is the smallest process where I just trying to identify and we did a small activity, a practical activity and all and try to identify the behavior of any mobile app, any network web application or any network activities being performed by these certain apps. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, 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 I think uh, you got your answer. So great. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So my concern is. <clears throat> are we really compliant? Are we really, we are talking about standards. We know ISO standards, ISO 27,000 series and many other ISMS standards and all. We are talking about certain standards. Might be our organizations are working on certain standards. But where is the real time loophole? I think you are the best users and, and you have your own, uh, own um, thought process. Your opinion is more valuable to identify. And that input as a, as a technocrat, we use it as a social engineering. And we use that information to identify technically and we'll do the vulnerability assessment on that. And warfare, war is there. War is still there. Many new gadgets, if you really want, I think many new movies, music and content is already there. Gadgets are there. 
and i think you are already aware of drones so drone guns drone uh, granite kind of applications are there i went to china in 2014 i remember last i visited to china i personally saw in china i i personally i saw that part the two kids on uh, you know hawkers are there on the road side and uh, you got some shops uh, some uh, toy shops something like that two kids were trying to 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 convince to their parents please allow us to purchase the drones so might be uh, two guys they were known to each another or something like i don't know so i was there on on the on the exactly i'm talking about uh, shenzhen uh i was there and what i found a building was actually of uh, almost 50 floors building was there in front of that a small hawker shop you know some tent sort of something like that 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 shop was selling drones so two guys went over there convinced their parents purchased two drones and the kids they started flying drones there and then on the road on the street side they flew up to 50 floor or above and then they start hey they took a challenge to each another and see the guys i'm saying like might be uh, what i feel they they were around uh, 12 13 years age or 15 years not max more than that or something like that that was their age of those kids right and what they were doing in china i have found they were actually take a challenge and they're really fighting to each another using drones so the if the kids are learning to operate the drones and they are, they fly, flow on a very high and they strike both the drones to each other and let's see whose drone get you know fall down somewhere or 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 who will win or something so that kind of challenges they were playing on the roads can you imagine can can we really till in 2020 do we have such kind of infrastructure or any particular part in india if no really stop using it that's why government banned those 59 apps which was actually developed in china or maintained in china stop using it or take precautions because that is the only and only way to survive in the cyber world and any fine day i think if you heard about uh, i'll just uh, correlate i don't know whether it is uh, true or false i'm not saying about the authenticity or veracity of this particular part but this is what a kind of assumption which we have i hope you heard about some samsung note some some tablets were there and it is actually banned once you are flying on airport they'll always ask you sir are you carrying that samsung tablet or not if not uh, if not that's okay if you are carrying please take it off you are not supposed to keep it in in your luggage or something like that or you are not supposed to carry those devices what was the reason because there was a one incident held that somebody was flying in the in in the plane carrying that tablet and it was blasted it was blasted in the plane where all the passengers were there and the flight is on 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 go it was you know so what was the reason in in a flight the temperature is even uh, somewhere uh, room temperature i would say not little chilly temperature in the flights if little chilly temperature chilled environment is there in the flight somebody said that battery was exhausted or burned or because it was uh, on a high temperature so it's hot and it blasted and just because of that was a so it's a battery problem or something like that is it really a battery problem or might be some circuitry some signals were actually if you know c language frankly speaking we did this practically we did this in c we use a interrupts and irq programming where you can increase the voltage or data transfer flow or the voltage flow of your cpu and you can burst your cpu you can burst your lan cards using c language because it is system oriented language where you you can able to connect with your kernels same way might be one of the app which might be increasing the temperature of any battery and say it blast at certain things and might be that that device was operated either in korea or china or somewhere else. Uh, don't you think so that is quite possible it is not difficult at all but challenges are there that's what like android uh, updates security updates and many things which we are talking all these things so we just need to 
correlate and any fine day if there is a cyber war i believe i truly believe that will be in danger india is more more uh, you know concerned about this like in covid 19 i think now you are quite aware of we already crossed us russia figures in covid 19 though in that was not at all being you know from from india somehow somebody said that it is from china somebody came to india and then it is it spread it across is it really something like again so it's it's a there is a doubt but the problem is biological war has already been initiated if it is a biological war the next and the most important war like i don't know whether really uh, the the warriors were there physically presented on the borders and they really have to present over there or instead of that why don't we we hire some drones we prepare some drones some robots for fighting on the behalf of the warriors and and who are their their operators might be our kids are sitting and operating the robots and and drones and something like that quite possible 100 percent possible and might be our kids might be a warrior sitting somewhere at home operating from their laptop and they'll get a challenge to come and uh, get enrolled in some games and you have like pubg games or something like that games and and you become a member of that and you are actually for for you you are playing but for for might be that is being operated or connected with some real time uh, some some gadgets or uh, web servers or like iot devices kind of and actually the emulation is performing on the borders real time possible 100 percent possible only the part is we have to think from those directions we have to think about first of all let us save ourselves let us save our community your college your your nears your family members your colleagues let us try to save with some do's and don'ts some precautionary part and if if you can i think that is a wonderful part that's the best part uh where uh i think slow and gradually we are actually going to secure our country obviously let let government will take their initiative let them ban do whatever they want to do but yes the flames are there with them as well i i quickly sh share a one uh, uh, uh a, a basic intelligence part delhi police already have a special cell where they already have a sentiment analysis project which is running in their premises officially and they just pass a particular keyword and able to grab the details say from twitter or say from facebook and identify the sentiments means today if any community is talking about let's say go for dharna at jantar mantar or something so delhi police will gonna pass just a keyword jantar mantar and they'll get to know whomsoever is going to connect and talking about jantar mantar anywhere in the globe not only in this country because they are using twitter they are using facebook so it means our data is actually used for mining data mining artificial intelligence and that is basically somehow connected to hacking our privacy got breached and if it is breached might be disconnected to cyber terrorism section 66f it act 2008 privacy breach 66e even why not uh, other other sections of uh, 66 and i think if you just explore quickly with sections of it act you will be able to understand uh, many new things i i just uh, show you uh, even on delhi plus government uh, portal my one of the document which has already been uploaded to the delhi government uh, website delhi police website is already there if i am carrying quickly on the top i'll just quickly see i'll share i just shared this to someone delhi police delhi police delhi police where is delhi police uh okay delhi let's let me find if that uh, uh uh okay okay law 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 cyber law dark web uh, no so so uh, the concern is i think i'll just find out uh, somehow or uh, 
possible i'll share it with you uh the concern is uh no it's not uh, right now might be some other drive but okay so my concern is like law is already updating themselves already e courts initiated started and one of our very renowned judge uh, I, I really appreciate he was also the member uh, i think uh, huda sir he's uh, again of one of the friend of dr huda sir uh, sir i'm talking about talwan singh sir like yeah yeah, he, yeah. yeah, yeah. so he is already uh, a, a jury member and uh, now he's in high court and uh, he was also one of the member who initiated e courts and see today the potential of e courts how how these e courts are going almost all the cases is being started and if there is any sensitivity i think nobody is going i means from in the jails in all the jails already they have a, again similar video conferencing setup and again that will be get recorded with the complete evidence so that even the victim or accused cannot deny for any particular part so that is being also being recorded so see it is not even initiated now i think 10 years decades back uh, that concept was raised and but it was not in use though it was initiated but immediately it, it turned up so the jury is again turned up to this particular due to covid 19 because now we cannot physically connect to each another let's say virtually we connect and let us proceed our work let us proceed our job so i really appreciate the members like and and uh, i think the where uh, we all are somehow connected this is the way how the people are initiating this is the way how all the law is working in india and still there is a lacunas there are certain gaps let us quickly uh, identify first let us i think uh, decide to never to become a victim of any cyber threat any financial frauds any online uh, uh, the social media frauds so many many frauds many many case studies are there but i think i already exhausting a lot of time so i'll not share more on that but i think i have given you a real time practice and real time research work which we did and we identified uh, just in covid uh, duration only in this last couple of months we were working and i just shared one or two uh, uh, to uh, uh, particular result oriented or analytical results and uh, on that basis so cyber war is on it's already on especially special dates like 14th august 15th august already on the media on the newspaper you might have seen the news so it is already going on cyber war is not from today but so long but again it was not highlighted or it is not initiated in that particular format but now even after covid the problem the situation is something uh, drastically it has changed take precautions more important take precautions work on your own do's and don'ts let us check if it is really required though you have internet package of 3 months or 1 month unlimited but please before you you start using 24 by 7 why your internet is on even you can check exactly 200 hours i'm talking about 2 am just check your mobile if it is your internet is on by default whatsapp initiated and shows you that it is taking some data backup what type of data backup is being initiated every after 24 hours and specially they opted 200 hours 2 am and not only one app many other apps have their own time standards their own time frame and they are actually grabbing each and every information from our devices and might be we are aware of not but frankly speaking these third party apps are more more concerned and they know our behavior very well and in advance and they are using for their might be for business intelligence or might be for cyber war or could be for any any particular part that is really dangerous for us never become a zombie like other country uh, hackers were talking about like indians are zombie because they are misusing our identities our digital devices and accessing for their positive part or for their their uh, benefits might be using for dos ddos attacks like if if they really want that Uh, some attacks are going in pakistan due to ip of india where indians are not doing all are innocent but what happens somehow they are using as a vpn or some some proxies of indian devices and somewhere the people are sitting even in pakistan or any other country and they are doing certain nuisance activities and generating a uh, problems for others so 
my concern is if internet is not required stop it don't use it if it is required just start it download whatever you want access you do whatever you like and but make your own mitigation policies as per your usage i think that is more important so we want indian standards to be imposed rather than iso standards we want indian culture is to be imposed and indian uh, regional concern is also be to impose i appreciate one more problem in india like please stop using abbreviations i don't know now you your youngsters you have find like they have different language style lol lol i don't know why they are writing tysm what is tysm uh, thank you so much uh, come on why don't you write thank you so much yaar? so means now that's a biggest problem which i have identified now the people are not good in english they are not good in hindi they are not good in their even own mother tongue so one single statement carries all the combination of the so we have english or i don't know which type of language we are using and that might create a sentiment problems with other religion because mota bhai means in gujarat mota bhai means bada bhai and in north india if you say hey, mota bhai ya yeah, if you say hey, mota so i think might be you will get a, another challenge so you are inviting come let's fight are you talking in this way or many many means uh, i i was surprised couple of cases were there and i was surprised like see just because of the language which we are using while typing on whatsapp or on chats uh, people sued to to the court and they are asking for for compensations do take care of precautions and i think lots of things to be discussed but i think again uh, within the limited time i'll just wind up at this stage if you have uh, some questions uh, uh, yes sir uh, dr gupta uh, this is personally i have seen and i was somewhere connected to that project now delhi police is doing sentiment analysis i think there was a question from dr gupta so yes delhi police is doing sentiment analysis you do something else whether they'll react or not that's a different case altogether but they were well informed right they are well versed that what exactly is going at which place this concept also i think some other day i'll take another session on on ascent that is called as open source intelligence so now government of india is working on ascent model o s i n t and and luckily connected to some uh, investigation agencies where i am also one of the member of that ascent uh, committee so we have something new nowadays something different nowadays and that is more important just to secure our country just to secure the citizen of our country and let us secure ourselves first of all and then only we can secure our country let let us initiate by us which is more important and uh, so so on this ground i i share uh, my details in case if you have any further queries or you are most welcome if you have any queries i'm here otherwise i'll share my details uh and uh, i think i'm just almost through i'll uh, uh share my details uh and uh, uh my email id uh yeah dr vishal thank you so much this is my link so they'll they'll able to find out everything on this website as well uh, otherwise this is email id and my mobile number right so thank you so much and uh, i think uh, over to you uh, dr vishal uh, dr huda thank you so much for giving me and uh, i i i really uh, admire for all the audience and they were really interested and they had lots of questions i believe uh, and we discuss and i try to resolve the questions as much as possible uh, thank you sir thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to interact with a wonderful audience and uh, to be a patient listener thank you over to you vishal sir over to you uh, huda sir thank you thanks a lot thank Thank you so much, Doctor Anu. The purpose of inviting you was so. In fact, we wanted that few practical cases be discussed by by you. That you did that, and that only you or people like you can discuss because you have that first hand first hand experience of dealing with different enforcement agencies. So otherwise, this this lecture would have been theoretical from teachers. So thank you so much for sensitizing. all the participants in fact this topic is so broad and every coming day it is becoming so broad that it is not possible to be covered in maybe 2 hours or maybe even a full day session but the bottom line of 
being a successful cyber netizen is that uh, let's open our eyes, let's uh, uh, apply our mind, let's not uh, apply too much of heart, apply our mind, what is required for me, what is not required for me, what we should uh, uh, open, who, uh, what we should not open, which kind of free application I can download and which kind of free application I should not. So sometimes, and in fact, most of the time, we have to apply resistance to our temptation as well in the industry 4.0 when the devices are increasing and the applications are also increasing every coming day. And of course, uh, maybe little later also, but uh, somehow or other we have to live in Atma and how long we will be dependent on China, on Taiwan, on the United States of America or in general the Europe and America. So yeah, with, the with all kind of applications and this uh, uh, practice of saving everything on Gmail, I think we have to be a little careful in that, that what all we should uh, retain at Gmail and for uh, what all matters we should not use the Gmail. But thank you so much for sensitizing, this was the purpose and that participating time for the information. Thank you so much and the certificate is here only to remind you that you have been part of this FDP, that is the purpose of this certificate. So this is from our side. Thank you so much. My dear participants, um, a few participants, in fact, few of my friends who joined this program only for one week to understand Moodle from 10 to 18 will be leaving us today. Uh, so for all of them, my uh, best wishes to all of you. And finally, I wanted to say you that uh, the success or failure of any of the program is not just on the parameters like how good the speakers were, how organized the program was, or uh, how valuable the contents were shared. Rather, the success or failure of any of the program will be just only on one parameter that to which extent the program helped you to change anything which, we, which you have been doing earlier. So if after attending this program, you realize that something has been changed, that will be our achievement. And then at that junction, I would like to request that that change process which you learned out of this program, that will be your takeaway. And that takeaway should not be confined with you. Keep sharing with that takeaway to those participants, with those participants who could not attend this. And also percolate these changes right away with your students so that finally the purpose of continuing learning despite disruptions must be ensured. That's my message. A feedback uh, form uh, has been shared in uh, your WhatsApp group uh, by my team members. Uh, my request to all of you, please fill up your feedback form because certificate generation process is connected with the feedback form. The moment you submit the feedback form, next 30, within 30 minutes, the certificate will be emailed for your, your one week FTP certificate will be emailed in your uh, email account as an attachment. This entire one month program was when planned. I kept focus, entire focus on education 4.0 and saw to it that this program is made with multi-entry, multi-exit. So at any, in any of the week, the participants can enter and in, at the end of any of the week, participants can uh, exit. And that's how afterwards, after launch of, much after launch of our program, Government of India when announced the national uh, new education policy, NEP 2020, they believed in the same fact and said that now all the programs will be with multi-entry and multi-exit having academic credit uh, uh, banks. So this program was complied with the NEP 2020 and with that we have launched this program. So wish you all the best and Thank anything, you, any query if you have, come back to the WhatsApp group that team members will solve. So otherwise you can, all of you might be having my WhatsApp number and mobile number as well. You can come back personally to me as well. So thank you so much. Wish you all the best. God bless. And thank you so much, Dr. Anu, please. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Anup, sir. Thank you very much to all the faculty members. Now, Melissa, can you please close?